our vision is how we endeavor to be on the planet. And so we like to make sure that we take time to ground ourselves in it. And so we recited together, we are a loving and compassionate, world-class teaching and empowerment ministry. Through a consciousness of universal God presence, we release all resistance, separation, and fear. We claim our personal liberation and accept the eternal availability of joy, love, and abundance. Through our intention to be love and spread joy, we engender reflections of the same and more in others. Our ministry is a gift to the world, which expands through our practice and dedication. We welcome all people, and together we make a quantifiable positive difference on the planet. And so it is. And so now, family, I simply invite you to breathe. Allowing yourself to be fully present in this moment. Grounded in right now. As we touch and agree and remember to remember that the infinite is here now. That God is, we are, and that all is well. That the same force that kept us while we slept and woke us this morning is rotating the planet, bringing the ocean to the shore. God's love is evident in our breath. I am grateful for this opportunity to simply be in this knowing, to be in this trusting, to be ever available to remembering that there is only one life and that life is God's life and that life is perfect. That is my life and it is the life of every single person here and beyond. And I know and I know that I know that the goodness of God is ever present, ever, ever overflowing, ever available to each and every one of us. It is without exception and it is regardless of the appearance of things. And so I know and I know that I know that goodness prevails. I know that love prevails. I know that justice prevails. I know that we move through this day knowing the goodness and love and light that resides not only in our hearts, but resides in every person around us. And that we seek it out on this day. We seek to know the love and compassion of everyone. And we seek to share that love and compassion. Our hearts are open wide, our minds are open wide. And I am grateful for heart and soul center of light and the permission it gives us to live our best lives to be our best, most powerful selves. I am grateful for this community and every heart and every hand that supports us. I am grateful for our beloved Reverend Andriette. I am grateful for our musical inspiration. I am grateful this day for the good sense to be grateful. And so I release this word into the law. I know that it is done. I expect it and accept it as so, now and forever. And so it is. I say good morning and happy Father's Day. It's a blessing to be here again with my heart and soul family. I want to share a song today first called Daddy. It's talking about my experience as a father and as a son. Perfect like God made the earth's form. 
Daddy's little angel got me wrapped around a finger. Got a special bond between us, can't be broken, strong as alloys. Watching you grow provides the purest notion of joy. You at that age, you got your own mind. I don't mind you expressing it as long as you stay respectful and see what the lesson is. Every time I guide you, I didn't been around a few blocks. You may not know it now, but soon you'll see you got a cool pops. I'm always trying to drop knowledge, and that's not gonna never change. Just trying to stroll, stay a couple steps ahead of the game. Life is hard. I spoil you, I probably shouldn't, but to see you smile is worth the while. Don't want you to feel the way I did when I was a child. No father figure was around. My shoes and fits weren't the flyest like you got. The latest gadgets, that's a blessing. Don't take for granted, you make me smile. You're beautiful, intelligent, a hoop star. Your first date, I won't hate, but Norma had the gun drawn. Waiting on the front porch, if you're late coming home, I'ma come for him. Don't be mad at me, I'm just being daddy, uh. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you, baby. Oh, hey, baby. Son, young king, fresh prince, spitting image, looking at you, give me strengths. I see a glimpse of a better me, a better world. So much to learn, so much to give. Not tainted by the world's images, so much to learn, so much to give. Well mannered, well dressed, fly handsome, playful spirit. Wish your life could stay so simple. Wish you ain't have to see what exists. Racism, poverty, classism, injustices. Hopefully, we raise you well and change the world and make a difference. Right now, I'm incomplete. Something's missing because the distance that separates us. I hope you grow up and you understand. Don't hold against me a tough decision. Some things in life don't go as planned. But guaranteed I'll be around to teach you how to be a man. And get involved in community and responsibility. Don't hesitate. Go out and follow your dreams. Play the keys. That's cool with me, huh? But you got to choose your path. Save your cash. Spend it wise. Know you are a God. And let nobody tell you otherwise. And when the cops pull up behind, do what I showed you to survive, huh? Stay alive and call your daddy. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you, baby. Oh, hey, baby. I love, I love you, love, I love, I love you, baby. You know I love you. Oh, hey, baby. My name is Kev Choice. Kev McDaniel should have been. Circumstances probably was too much to handle. I don't know, I never asked you where you was. I held a grudge. Mom held me down. She played that role, kept me straight. Even though deep down inside I had a void. Growing boy in this crazy world. How would I learn to defend myself, protect myself? They chased me home. I couldn't run to you for help. Remember that time you took me to the movie, said you'd be around? Next time I saw you five years later, a lot of dudes would have been better. I was smart enough to figure we all got ups, all got downs, all got demons. You had your reasons. Change your life. Raise my sisters. A good husband. Strong provider. Love you hustling, working hard. You got two jobs, making sure that you and yours can have no wants. You came so far, you show support, be at my shows, gleam with pride. I know this music in my veins is mostly from your family side. My pop's a legend in the game, Bay Area Gospel Hall of Fame. It's such a shame he never really got to see me do my thing. Life goes on, I know we got a bond, and if you ask me where I get my good looks and charm and hustle mentality, the apples don't fall far from the tree. I get it from my daddy.
thank you, Kev. Happy Father's Day. And thank you so much for your gift to all of us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, heart and soul. That's Kev Choice <laughs> with Daddy, just to bring us into the celebration of Father's Day. Heart and Soul has traditionally done a, a program centering on fathers and celebrating fathers. And I want you to know that in my heart and our intention is exactly that heart and soul to celebrate fathers. And today it's a little different. There's a lot on my heart. There's a lot in the world. And so happy Father's Day to all all of our brothers of every shade and color and hue and ethnicity just celebrating the male energy, um, knowing something qu quite magnificent uh, is unfolding in all of this. So what I want to acknowledge, and there's a, a slide that that acknowledges fathers as the dream of every child. Can we show that slide, please? I, I just want that, that to be, I want that to resonate in the, in the spirit of all of the brothers. And when I say brothers in this instance, I mean all y'all. That you are the dream of every child. And here's what I know for sure, and Kev included this, since in his lyrics even, what I know for sure is that for some children, that dream is fully realized. They fully realize the dream of a father and all that that means to them, and it's unique for everyone. And yet I also acknowledge in this moment that there's a whole cadre of youngsters for whom this is an intentionally deferred dream. That the men that were the, fa that were the fathers by birth, biological fathers, or would one day have been, were intercepted in a way that ensured that they would not be the answer to the dream. I, I hope you're feeling what I'm saying. I, I, I want to take us um, through a little something just so that we can, we can have a backdrop, we can lay a foundation because I have heard in the world the criticism of brothers around their fatherhood. And I, I just want to establish that there, there really is some intentionality that that doesn't, I mean, or, I mean systemic intentionality that that doesn't always rest you. We can't always place that at the feet of individual brothers as if there was a specific choice to abdicate. That instead, there's systems that have been in place. Let, 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 let's go there. So we have just celebrated Juneteenth. And it got some interesting press this year. I'm not going there. I just want to acknowledge I know. And um, that, but, but, but I, I want to give a backdrop to Juneteenth because what I know, what history reveals is that black folks who were enslaved and free gathered on December 31st, 1862, because they'd heard word that as of January 1st, they heard word that President Abraham Lincoln had signed an Emancipation Proclamation and that effective January 1st of 1863, they'd be free. Now, what I, the picture I want to paint is one of those watch meetings or the Freedom Eve meetings that would have been on December 31st where they're waiting till midnight. But you know what we're up to? We're in prayer and declaration 
of how it's going to be on the other side. Somebody understands what I'm talking about, that this is not taken lightly. Sometimes we talk about, or often we talk about Juneteenth, but we start on June 19th, 1865, and that's important because it's an important part of the intentionality of the systemic interruption of family and freedom and human decency. But, but I, I want to tell a bit of a story here that, that so on the eve, imagine, if you will, what would happen for us, what we would do. It's not that different. You understand we would come together. They would be, <laughs> you can see us. Come on now, use your imagination. You can see us crowding in. You know that that's the gathering where we wouldn't turn anybody away. It's full in here. Go some, uh-uh, not for this, not for Freedom Eve. For the watch, for that moment when we're all free, nobody has a watch. But we are working this out because at the moment of midnight, there's getting ready to be a happy dance. They're getting ready to be a, a song sung because we absolutely bought in <laughs> to the idea that one day, one would be enslaved, and the next day, one would be free. So for some, they were able to actualize that. But for many, nothing changed. Intentionally. I, not by virtue of their own initiative, or their will, or their creativity, but by virtue of the systems in place. I want to be sure we understand that what these systems are about. Um, but again, I want to set a context because because I want to tell this story a certain way. So, so of course you already know that that's January of 1863. But Juneteenth is 1865. So two and a half years later, there's some people who have to be notified. So there are about 25,000 folks, at least. This is just the numbers that get reported in history. And, no, let me not. Mm -mm. So those are the numbers recorded in history. So what we have is in 1865 in June, in Texas, and that's the origin for Juneteenth, is in Texas because that's where the Union troops came in to free those slaves who Texas had apparently no intention. Anytime it takes you two and a half years to let folks know, you don't have any intention of setting them free. And so the celebrations that ensued after that were about being free. Now, someone would say, and this I think is a lesson for us when we engage the principles, is that they were already free legally. So I'm talking to somebody now who's waiting for freedom, who's waiting for happiness, who's waiting for health, who's waiting for joy, who's waiting on it. Like there's going to be a moment when you're not going to be that. That moment requires a self-awareness because in truth they were already free legally. Now, this is the historians are, don't pull your hair out yet because I know better. I'm painting a picture here. You're going to have to teach this someplace else. The historians and the, the y'all going to have to teach it in a different way. I'm doing something else here. I'm working with people's hearts and their spirits, and I'm wanting to do whatever it takes to set somebody free who is waiting to be set free. And that's the way I'm trying to tell this, because just as you believe, that's how it's done unto you. So y'all know we've already visited a number of times, Matthew 9, 27 through 30. But I want to get to that part where it says, where it says there, he touched their eyes and he said, just as you have believed, let it be unto you. This is the master teacher, Yeshua, that the world ultimately came to call Jesus. And then that next line says, and at once their eyes were opened. So that says to me, and I'm going to remind you that the problem was the eyes was closed. 
that they were not seeing what was there. They're, they're, see, I don't think it's really talking about ocular blindness. I think it's talking about sight or willingness to see beyond the effect, see beyond what seems to be happening here, see beyond what the difficulty is, whatever the block is to see beyond that to the freedom, to the heart's desire to know that all of that is available and it requires that we claim it. See, I'm, I'm wanting to put that in at this moment because the, the Emancipation Proclamation is a good thing. It just wasn't the whole thing. In fact, it's a little bit of a, no offense intended historians, but a bit of a bait and switch. Because we, we read it or we record it in our minds and hearts historically as if it was to free the slaves and all slaves were freed. But under closer examination, it was only applied to about 10 Confederate states, and those were the ones to be punished because they were seceding from the Union. So it was less about freeing the people than breaking the back of the Confederacy. So it's just, I think it's important that we understand as we celebrate Father's Day how certain fathers had the deck stacked against them before they were ever born, before their fathers were 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 born. Fathers were born. There's an historic bait and switch, uh, an historic crack in the foundation. You see, in the very foundation of the Constitution and the legal actions that were taken to support that because the Emancipation Proclamation had to be voted on, if you will, or the actual amendment to the Constitution had to be voted on by the House. And it was clearly not as we have recorded it under her, as we want it to be. We want it to be a time. I know, I feel it. At least I do. Let me speak for me. What I learned in history, I wanted it to be true that Abraham Lincoln, without saying all he said about it was not his intention to free the slaves so that they might vote, so that they might have a voice, so that they might, that they might co-mingle, that they might be a part of it. That wasn't it. It was to punish those southern states who were making bank on the backs of black folks. And it had the union out of whack because northerners did not have that same advantage to the same degree. Do not hear me say like they didn't have slaves too. But I'm off point. Let me get back. So it's clear that everybody would not immediately be free regardless. So here's where I want to take us now, Matthew 6 and 8. Your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Ernest Holmes is saying about that scripture, so it becomes a question of whether our faith is greater than the obstruction, whether we are becoming confused over conditions, or are we thinking peacefully, and calmly about them. See, I, I, I need you to, to meet me in an awareness. We don't, the, just because we are aware does not mean we, we have to give up our intention. See, there are some folks who would rather that I not have this talk, who would rather I get to something else. What's that thing you did last year, Rev, for Father's Day? Can't you just do that? Why you got to take us all down here? We need to go. It can't all just be fuzzy and warm. We, if we're going to build a real foundation of truth, we're going to have to tell the truth. Now, we don't have to get mad in the telling. And when I say get mad, I mean start behaving in ways that don't serve. See, when you're mad, you're probably not thinking as clearly as I need you to think. 
See, I need you to know this and move to the next thing. I need you to understand what happened and benefit from the awareness. I'm not saying this so you can just get upset and have to go, I don't know, eat your pain away. Eat the stress away. I'm not, I guess that's a little <laughs> TMI. <laughs> I know all y'all don't do that. You don't eat your feelings. Some do. The idea here that I'm wanting to get across is we can know the truth. What is it? Isn't that the thing? Know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, when you understand it, you, 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 you stop yourself blame and shame. When you understand that it's set up so that you wouldn't be fathering. It's set up so that the family unit would not be a real thing, except for exceptions. And they're always going to be the exceptions. So come on, let's go with this. That when the, when the Emancipation Proclamation was, was then written into law, if you will, I want to call your attention to the 13th Amendment right here. And just this little part. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist in these United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Now that sounds like, oh, we are free. Until you realize that you are already marked, that certain people are already marked for punishment for crime and will be duly convicted, no matter what. Vagrancy laws. Th there were a number of laws immediately put on the books where there had been none to ensure that that workforce would be available without change. Because the Emancipation Proclamation said you'd work for pay. And ideally, right where you are. That's not what happened at all. And in fact, what began really was, my note to myself is, a post-war slavery to convict pipeline. And that's because it's, it's current culture that we understand that there have been pipelines in our public schools from elementary school to prison, pipelines, that there's some, there's some ways that that is intentionally put in place. I'm still talking about Father's Day and the intentionality of keeping some people, some youngsters from the dream realized of a father. It's to ensure that those fathers, those black men who had been enslaved, would be re-enslaved, but legally. And so that's what we had and still have. John Oliver offers us this. I brought you this before. He says, because ours is a firmly entrenched system. See, that's why I was trying to lay it out, because I don't want to just give you that quote and have you say, how so, Rev? What firmly entrenched system? I hope you get it, that this is a firmly entrenched system in which the roots of white supremacy, he says, run deep, deep, like, well, what would be the, let's, if we're going to pick a starting place, we can just start with, 1862. But you know, I don't have to say, 1600s, but even before that, if you go to the museum, the, the African American Smithsonian Museum, you know that 1400s is, but at any rate, when we talk about it running deep, we mean deep. And he goes on to say that it's critical that we all grab a shovel to do whatever Ever, whatever we can do, he says, anything less than that would be absolutely unforgivable. This is a call to action. It's a call to prayer. It's call, this is a calling all allies. Pick up a shovel. And a shovel would be a metaphor. See, when you get a shovel, no, nobody just pick up a shovel. 
When you pick up a shovel, you have an intention. You already picked where to play. No, you don't walk around with a shovel looking for somewhere to dig. The shovel is a metaphor because when you get a shovel, you're ready to work. So get ready to work. That's what the call is for all of us. And look, the work we're doing is not patchwork. I'm going to hearken back to Matthew 9, which reminds us that you're not just going to take the old coat and start putting new patches on it. And if you don't understand that, you wine drinkers know this. You don't start putting a new wine in the old wine bottle, old wine bag. You don't do that. And so this is that call that says we must reimagine and initiate systemic change. And we see it. We see it happening. We see the, the embryonic indicators. We see that we're going to give birth to something new, something different, something inspired. This is what I'm calling Freedom 2020. Y'all know we started out the year saying 2020 in 2020. This is that moment. It's the call for a compelling vision. And that's beginning to say this notion of defund the police. I wish we wouldn't say it that way because that's upsetting a lot of people who could help. And they, we, they, we have to give them triage now on the side. What we're saying is let's, let's look more, more closely at how we spend the money. It's our money. In every municipality, that money is our money. We have paid those taxes. They're not printing money to do this. We are contributing the people. It's the people's money. So the people have a right to a compelling vision about how it would be used. And we already know that the best ways are to take care of those who need taking care of. And it's not by brute force that we know that has never worked. Militarizing care has never worked. There's a place for military. There's a place for security. But there's also a place for caring for those that are weaker, for those who require some mental support, mental and emotional support. We must build broad-based coalitions. We see that now. And a long-term commitment. This has to be longer than just the protest. It has to be longer than just the COVID shelter in place. Long-term commitments. The ones who say, I am in this till my last breath. And I'm willing to train somebody in case my last breath is sooner than when I thought it would come. That, that it means my long-term commitment is realized because I got some folks coming up that I'm bringing along. That it's a season of change. That we're ready for it. You know, p- folks who come, Californians don't necessarily have this down. But folks from other states, they know about seasons. And they know about getting ready very specifically around the seasons. This is a getting ready very specifically about a new season, a new normal. And a new normal says we don't look back and wonder what happened. We are present to what must must happen now. Beginning from now on is the idea. So look, that brings us, because there are a group of people who get this really clearly, Black Lives Matter. And I got to tell you again, matter is a pretty low bar. That's a pretty low bar when you say black lives matter. So look, I got to remind you, I'm told that I said last week, black lives matter. You can agree or you can disagree, but you don't get to change the subject. So you're either in on that or you're out. But you do not get to start a new conversation while we're working on doing the work and making the change. I hope that's clear. Look, um, I'm going to speed forward because I know some of y'all are worried that I got way too many pieces of paper left. (laughs) Way too many. So look, I do want to, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, Alicia Garza, says this. And it's this notion of, of black lives mattering is a precondition for all 
lives mattering. See, you, you can get this. This isn't the slide, baby. Go to the next one. Look, the reason this is so important is I've been laying out a foundational awareness of the systemic misinformation, the systemic um, enslavement of black men in particular. Sisters, I'm not leaving you out. It's Father's Day. And so I'm focused very specifically about the brothers because that's the, 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 the scales are tilted, are weighted in that way. So she says that Black Lives matters, Matter doesn't mean your life is not important. It means that black lives, which are seen without value within white supremacy, are important to your liberation, everybody's liberation. See, until black folks are free, based on that historical perspective, you see, if you understand that, that when we're free, <laughs> everybody's free. Can, wish it wasn't so. I mean, but that, that's the way it's laid out. When we're free, it's freedom time. So look. Here's how, you may have heard this before, but she breaks it down further. She says it might help. It may help if you think about it this way. If you are, get into an automobile collision and one person has a serious head injury and others have a few bumps and bruises, but the first one's life, the one with the, with the serious head injury, that person's life is at risk we would think that that person would have priority in medical care. That's what triage is about, is so that we can determine. We're not just taking you in order. What's your number? We make some shifts based on triage. It looks like we need to get to this person right away. So it doesn't mean that the paramedics are not going to help everybody else. It just means that they're going to place the most dire situation first in line. I'm trying to say something here. She says, or let me give you another example. If somebody keeps setting your house on fire, you'd want the firefighters to do something about it. But you'd be upset if the people gathered and said, well, everybody's house is important. We're going to start at the other end of the block and work our way to yours. That wouldn't make any sense. We're saying our lives are on fire. Could somebody ensure that, it's get, that it gets put out safely? I wouldn't want you to believe that I'm implying that we don't have immense power because we do. I'm going to ask you to say this with me. Put yourself on mute so you're not wearing the people out. I'm going to ask you to recite with me. Ernest Holmes has a... I have an excerpt from Ernest Holmes that I've been using that reminds me of the power I have. See, he, here's my approach. I watch some of what's televised and shared. But I have to take a break because my spirit can't, I can't handle a whole lot of negative and pain. And this is both negative and painful. So when I get to that point where I feel my vibration lowering and my frequency being compromised, and for me, that's what life is about. It's about vibration and frequency. If I'm not bringing that power, I'm at the effect of something. And so I have to make sure, I'm just telling you, some of y'all may think this is TMI, not for me. I'm just sharing. This works for me. So when I realize that my, my frequency and vibration are being compromised, I have to have some tools handy. So I'm either putting on my, my, my empowerment playlist where I'm playing the songs that once I finish rocking with that and the lyrics and the music, then I'm changed. I'm back to a new normal that has my frequency back up and my intention is even a bit higher. I hope that makes sense. 
And sometimes I can't get to the playlist. I got to have an affirmation. There, see, I'm responsible for my frequency. This is important to know. I'm not expecting anybody to come to the rescue. I know y'all got capes and all that. But I'm not expecting you to come to the rescue to help me change my vibration. I'm not expecting CNN or MSNBC or Fox News Network, none of them, to change my vibration. I'm responsible for my vibration and my frequency. And one of the ways I do it is to make certain that I impress upon my consciousness that that does it, that that when I focus on it, it takes me to a higher place. So, so I'm inviting us to go to a higher place because I know I laid out some stuff that's making some of y'all uncomfortable. You already had a little extra bite of something or a little sip of something. So now let's do the affirmation together so that we can get righteous with our spirit. And then Kev is going is gonna, to is gonna cinch it for us. It's going to ensure that whatever worries that we, we've been bringing to stuff, because sometimes that's what happens. We hear whatever it is, and we just start worrying. Can I tell you that worrying is a vibration you need to avoid? It's a very low frequency, and it accomplishes nothing. So this would be me making the international symbol for no worries, just like that. No worries, no more, yeah? And to support us with this, Ernest Holmes. So together we say, there is that within me which knows, understands, accepts, believes, recognizes, and embodies. I know and I know that I know. I believe and I know that I believe. Pause for just a moment, y'all. Because what? It is done unto you as you believe. So the fact that you believe and you know that you believe, there you go. Let's continue. I am confident of the power of my own word. And I have implicit reliance upon the truth. Pause for a moment so we can remind ourselves that our implicit reliance is upon the truth and not the news networks. I expect the truth to operate in my life. And so it is. Thank you. Care, choice. Cause we got it by the angels from high up above Now we can be as close as we never was I pray to God we protect it from whatever come But no worries, no worries love Cause we got it by the angels from high up above Now we can be as close as we never was I pray to God we protect it from whatever come But no worries, no worries love, no worries No threats, not no virus isolation. We just closer to the kingdom, Lord. Prepare me for this test. Prepare me to the best. Lord's prayer before I rest. Saw his vision while I slept. Was an angel reaching out a hand saying, Follow in these steps. Know the heavens waiting for you on the other side of death. What is death but a concept for humans to express? Like an understanding, a process with spirit lead the flesh. Eternal rest, no fear. Guided by the ancestors, blessed. By the elders we protect, every hand we disinfect. Please give me six steps, that's a matter of respect. Diseases planned by a man-made architect. When the government write them checks, add reparations while the ink wet. To descendants of Africans, Native Americans, Aztecs, they infected us with smallpox, malaria, yellow fever, influenza, syphilis, and we gon' get through this, but don't worry. 
no worries, love. Cause we got it by the angels from high up above. Now we can be as close as we never was. I pray to God we protect it from whatever comes. No worries, y'all. No worries, love. Cause we got it by the angels from high up above. And now we can be as close as we never was. I pray to God we protect it from whatever comes. But no worries. No worries, love. No worries. I was saying that I needed some more time at home. Careful what you wish for. The universe is blissful. So many things I miss though. So much I took for granted. Things I couldn't see now seem clear as crystals. Maybe this beneficial. Hey, we gon' get through. Stay productive and prayerful for understanding. Don't watch the news. It causes panic. My spiritual practice says all is good. All is God. How we think controls it all. Even pray for 45. Nah, forget that dude. My soul is lost. Up to him we all should die. They drop the ball. We need a medical supply some weeks ago tests like they did in south korea where the virus been suppressed to success seems our leaders are a mess some of us are being rudy go back careless and hanging out that's selfish you know what's next martial law civil unrest i'm too stressed been hella days in the house ain't left starting to get restless need to connect feel your caress i risk death just to be in your presence but no worries no worries love Cause we got it by the angels from high up above And now we can be as close as we never was I pray to God we protect it from whatever come No worries, no worries, love Cause we got it by the angels from high up above And now we can be as close as we never was I pray to God we protect it from whatever come But no worries, no worries, love No worries, Don't you worry about a thing, yeah. Don't you worry about a thing, about a thing, yeah. Kip Choice, thank you. You bless us. Oh, Oh, you bless us. No worries. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. That was Kip Choice. So look, that's like that's like a perfect theme song in a sense for an adventure in faith. And we know that 2020 in 2020 to see what's really going on, to see underneath and around and through. Now, that's an adventure in faith. But I love that our brother said, no worries. (laughs) Go take the adventure in faith. No worries, though. So, look, there is um, now, there is, I'm going to ask Revelo to open our opportunity for gracious giving. I know we've been up to quite a lot in this, in my talk, in my message this morning. And I'm just going to ask that you, that you give generously, that you connect the dots in a way that you can see the difference that you make and the opportunity for you to 
support what we're up to as we support the higher vision. Revelo? Thank you, Reverend Andriette. Thank you so much for reminding us that if we're gonna build a real foundation of truth, we're gonna have to tell the truth. That's how we repair a crumbling foundation and build a world that works for everyone. So this does indeed bring us to our time of gracious giving. And as you can see on the slide, we have lots of ways for you to graciously give your gift to Heart and Soul Center of Light. You can mail your gift to Heart and Soul Center of Light, 1001 42nd Street, Suite 100, Oakland, California, 94609. You can give online, setting up your gift as a one-time offering or as a recurrent gift, simply by going to heartsoulcenter.org slash give. And you can text the word give to 510-500-5849. In whatever way you choose to give, that's right and perfect. The important thing is that we are always actively in a giving mode because we live in a reciprocal universe that allows us to receive as we give. It's not transactional. It's the way life works in an abundant universe. And at Heart and Soul Center of Light, we have a tradition of blessing our gift before it is even given, thereby establishing the good that our gift will do in the world. So wherever you are in the world, I invite you to take your gift in hand or maybe just place your hand over your heart, knowing that the greatest gift there could ever be is the gift of life that is beating softly below your hand. So let us say our blessing together. I bless this gift as healing energy and send it into the divine flow of all good. Infinite prosperity circulates through me, through my church, and throughout the world, because I know God as source, and so it is. Don't you worry about a thing on this adventure in faith. In fact, replace that worry where that had been with the expectation of a miracle. That'll set you about right. I want to give thanks for those folks in particular. You know, I love y'all in the greater Bay Area, and I am so grateful that you're tuning in and that you are a part of what happens on our Sunday mornings for our virtual service. But I want to give props and, and hands up for fl folks from Florida and Costa Rica and Fresno and Brazil and Denver. And uh, the yes, again, San Francisco, Benicia, Pleasant Hill, Napa, Capitola. And I know our local folks are there from Berkeley and Oakland, et cetera. Thank you. I'm just loving you for showing up. That's what makes it, makes it happen, frankly. Whatever it is that is going on, we are doing our, going on in your life, that can be, um, lowering your vibration or contributing to lowering your frequency, know that we are here. And one of the ways that we are here is our practitioners are doing a Monday evening 
you know, we have as our daily read for this year, our, our devotional, daily devotional, if you will, A Year of Miracles by Marianne Williamson. And it really is to some extent, the wind beneath our wings as a daily read. And so the practitioners are every Monday in June have been hosting a study group so that you, a book study, you don't have to be there every week. It would be valuable to you, but if that doesn't work for you, show up when you can. But when you show up, get in. Get in the deep end of it. So it's 6.30 Pacific time on Monday evening, so tomorrow evening. So be there for that. There's also, we are deep in the preparation for, so we're asking you to save the dates for summer school. It's seven consecutive Wednesdays, excuse me, July 8th through August 19th. And the sessions begin at 6.30 p.m. If you, you know, those of you who are regular summer school attendees, participants, then let the other folks know. Give them a sense of what they can expect and get folks on so they'll be with us so that we can expand our consciousness but also raise our vibrations together. That's what it's about. And if you ever have heard Tammy Hall play, you know that that's a vibrational raising opportunity. She is on Facebook every Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific Time, and that's on Facebook Live, Tammy Hall Live. We are in support of Marcus Books, the oldest African-American-owned bookstore, brick and mortar. And I want you to know that this morning someone reached out to me to say that Marcus Books was on NBC, on the Today Show uh, this morning. And sure enough, they were interviewing Blanche, Blanche Richardson. And an interesting thing about these times and all of us suggesting that folks read books, that folks are going to Marcus Books. They are ordering books from them. And so there's a change afoot that is making a huge difference. I'm going to ask you to keep it up. If you haven't thought about them for some of the book lists that you've been sharing with people, think about them and include them in that, please. Also, lift up uh, Kingston 11 for some good eats. It's all to go now still. Um, it looks like that's going to be changing soon. So it's for takeout. Call in, go pick up. And uh, also, you can get it through delivery services. Good eats, we will be gathering there as soon as we are open to do that. We're released to do that, if you will. And in addition to that, I also want you to know that if there are young folks in your lives, there's the, the Pulse, which is ages 13 to 18, and they meet via Zoom at 1130 every Sunday morning. So if you'd like, if you have a teen and you'd like for your teen to participate, you'll need to send an email so that they can give you the information. And likewise, if you have a little one, age 4 to 12, they meet at 4 p.m. on Sundays. And again, send an email to the address shown so that you can be given the login information. Know that prayer is available and being offered. Our practitioners are available immediately following service and about within about 10 minutes the rooms will be open for prayer and it's virtual so you'll want to dial in by phone the number is on the screen right now and the they set it up so that there are four rooms let me give you a sense of that that each room has a theme if you will so if if what you want prayer about is about your work or your creative self-expression your prosperity or supply then they put those folks in one room with a practitioner to do prayer about that if you're looking for right action and divine guidance that's in another room with a different practitioner if you're if it's about health and healing that's in a different one. And if it's about love, relationships, harmony, peace, and joy, then that's in a separate one. And so it is, we're doing it by dial-in so that you can have some degree of anonymity, and, but still you can be a part of this. I encourage you to get prayer. Get prayer. Get prayer. And so from a place of universal love, 
just acknowledging all that we have shared together for the path that we have taken to get to this exact precious moment. I stand in divine recognition that there is one life and that that life is divine. It's whole, it's perfect, it's complete. It's the living one, it's the strong one. I'm living the life of the strong one. I'm breathing the breath of the strong one. And this is true for all of us, that each and every one of us is living the life of the living one, breathing the breath of the living one, the strong one, right where we are now, the whole perfect and complete nature of God is. And this word is calling it forth in the most desirable expression. My heart's desire is calling it forth in the most desirable expression for me, for our, ex for our community, for our expanded community, calling forth the absolute best and, best in health and wellness and vitality and in healed relationships. No worries. No worries that we can stand in our knowing the truth of our being have a greater sense of Father's Day and the, 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 the homage that we can pay to fathers everywhere, the forgiveness that can be invoked, the grace, the divine consideration. Oh, I speak this word from a place of gratitude, from a place of knowing that healing awaits our awareness. I'm just accepting the highest and best for everyone standing right now in the gap. For the ones who cannot yet see it for themselves, I'm standing in the gap. For the ones who don't yet hear it, for the ones who don't yet feel it, I'm standing in the gap declaring it is so. The healing, the divine vibration of change, of transformation, of healing and divine revelation, it is so. And so in this awareness of knowing that it's done unto us as we believe, as we are believing, and I am believing, I'm grateful. And so it is an absolute perfect gratitude that I release this word into the perfect activity of law that I accept it as so, that I know that it's done and done well in God that I simply let it be with no worries. That I know that universal love is present, surrounding and enfolding absolutely everyone, everything, all of the time. And so I just let it be. And I ask that if any of this is true for you or resonates in truth, that you would join me in sealing it by saying, Amen. Ashe. And so it is. And now we have the treat of a Kev Choice video, Universal Love. Feel it, be in the vibration. 